All right, what's up my brothers? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about liars and cheaters. So I got this request from a coaching client that I had a few sessions with, and he recommended that I made a video on this topic because, uh, well, long story short, he basically got duped and goosed by a whole bunch of women throughout his entire life, second guessing everything about himself and was <laughs> seriously considering about spending loads of time and money in therapy about why he's attracting these women. And the truth of the matter is, is that everybody lies, men and women inclusive. Women lie uh, for different reasons than men do. Women generally lie to preserve their purity, to give you the impression that they are more valuable than what they actually are. Because as we know, if, anyway, if you guys have read my book or followed my channel for a while, you know that women are beauty objects and men are success objects. Men lie, of course, to signal or um, you know suggest to the opposite sex that they're more successful or higher value than what they are. Uh, generally, men lie about their height on dating apps and the level of success that they've achieved. Women, on the other hand, on dating apps generally lie about what they look like because they use older photography or camera angles that make them look a lot lighter than what they are. Anyway, let me get back to the uh, request for this one over here. I'll just read it to you and then I'll um, get into my feedback as I'm driving off. Um, so, do, 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 most women are liars. I keep running into them, but I waste several months each time with them. And if you have any shortcut tips on how to spot them without wasting months on someone, that would be great. Um, bottom line to this, by the way, guys, is you want to compare what she says versus what she's doing or has done, okay? Um, so actions over words, basically. But I'm going to get into that more of that in a second. Um, the obvious answer would be check her phone. So I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but any other practical tips are welcome. I get into this cycle when I waste three, four, six months on a woman who will only say what I want to hear, only to find out a few months later that they are a completely different person and they lied about their past, their experiences, and also their present, and basically about who they are and are even seeing other guys despite me clarifying the boundary for me uh, from the beginning. Now, this guy is a, I'm going to say a, a, a high value guy. He's probably in the top 5%, makes good income, very good looking, uh, has game. Uh, he's, he's just a solid dude. Um, but, um, he, he keeps struggling with women's dishonesty. Um, anyway, shit hits the fan two to five months later. And I always end up being in the same situation. Maybe they perceive me as a plugged in alpha. Uh, they want to keep me around. So they'll just say whatever they think I want to hear only to find out I wasted months of my life on them. Some even suggested to me that, sorry, some friends even suggested me to do the opposite, meaning uh, to not mark any boundaries in the beginning and see what she voluntarily does. That's a strategy that you could use. Just, you know, whatever, just, just watch what she does. You know, you don't set any boundaries early on. You don't really need to set any boundaries early on when you're just dating anyway, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, we can talk about that more maybe in another video. And, and pretend it's all okay if I mark boundaries from the beginning. Some of my friends say the girl will be compelled to lie and do whatever she wants behind my back. Uh, da, 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 book. Okay, so that's really it for his request. Um, I want to share um, two stories with you first before I talk about picking up on liars. These are these are both personal of mine. The first story would be um, my first girlfriend, and I think I shared some of this in my book under the red flag chapters because I said to guys, you want to stay away from pathological liars. Pathological liars are problematic for men. They invite complication in your life. And I'll tell you how I spotted this one. So it's, it's really a matter of um, what's being said versus what's done. So this girl would constantly like go on about her motorcycle and how, how much she loved motorcycles and ninja this and ninja that. And then when I would say, okay, cool, where's your bike? Let's go riding, because I used to ride a uh, sport bike at that time. Oh, it's at my uh, mom's place, uh, whatever, 45 minutes away, and it's in storage, blah, blah, blah. It was never available. It never came out of storage. I dated this chick for months. Uh, even when the weather you know, warmed up into the summertime, she still didn't have it. And I remember one time, there was a, there was a few other things that were inconsistent with what she was uh, saying versus the, 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 uh, you know, the result of the actual behavior which led me to believe that she was full of shit. So I knew it at that time when I would fill up my bike with gas, it would cost me like nine bucks, like eight or nine bucks. Gas was a lot cheaper back then. Gas tank on, I think it was my 600 Katana, Suzuki Katana, and they're not big tanks. They're like five, five and a half gallon tanks. Or they were they were pretty small. Um, and I said to her one time, you know, when we were driving, I, I wasn't on the bike, I, I didn't just fill it up. And I said to her something like, yeah, you know, the bike, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And the other thing, I'm like, by the way, what does it cost you to fill that thing up? And she didn't have a bike. She had a car. 
So she quoted approximately what it cost her to fill up her car, which was 25 bucks. There's no way a motorcycle of any size at that time would cost 25 bucks to fill up. Uh, I think the biggest gas tank on any bike at that time was maybe six gallons tops. So um, yeah, not even close. But I knew right then and there that she was full of shit. Now, the problem with pathological liars is they invite unnecessary complications into your life. You might have boundaries, which they might violate, which you know we can talk about as well, but I'm gonna talk more about like risk sort of factors. She might say she's on birth control and it's okay, just go inside me. Surprise, nine months later, it's not okay and she's not on birth control or she forgot or she was never on birth control or she intentionally didn't take it, blah, blah, blah. So when you're dealing with women, it's really, really important. I mean, if you're gonna invite her into your life and get into a relationship with her, have kids with her, whatever it is you're planning on doing, that you make sure that she is not a pathological liar. So that's example one. That was that was the early years. Thankfully, I started to pick up on this shit when I was a young guy, but unfortunately, I didn't clue into the fact that most women generally lie to preserve their purity and to make themselves look, you know, good from that perspective. There's an old saying about how do you know a uh, politician's lying, and the answer is his mouth is moving. And I've heard guys say that about women too, which I don't think is entirely true or fair. Um, again. Everybody lies, men and women, generally for slightly different women reasons. But, you know, women women use a lot more words than men do. So I think you could argue that women do lie more than men. You know, when we communicate ideas that we're thinking about, it's, it's known. It's a given that women will use a lot more words to communicate than what men do. So chances, on a balance of probability, chances are she's probably lying when she's talking at some point. So let me share the second story. Um, fast forward to... 40 something ish. I, I can't remember how old I was at the time. Dating this chick for a few years and she ended up cheating on me, right? Now, I caught I caught wind, you know, like my spidey senses were tingling. Um, I just figured something was up and um, her behavior became more erratic. It was unfamiliar. It was just something that, um, you know, sort of like got my intuition sort of tingling, if you know what I'm saying. So, what did I do? I knew the password to her phone because it would be used to, you know, connect to uh, play music and stuff like that. Only she had changed her password at this time, and I was like, okay, that's even more suspect. When chicks do stuff like that, the, you know, the phone's down, they have the alerts disabled, they're, you know, they're hiding it when they're responding or typing, or they change their password. That's something that's up. Anyway, it was easy to to figure out. Got in, and you know, it's interesting because I said to her something along the lines of. Um, yeah, just to be clear, you're not seeing anybody else, right? Because there was a there was a little bit of um, you know like a gray area, you know, for for a little bit, um, and um, I basically just fucking let her like leave. I was like, whatever, you know, you're being a brat, just go. And of course, you know, she went off that night, pounded some guy, and then you know, like a, a week or two later, she wanted to get back together. And one of the first things I was doing was like, you know, kind of. A, like a plugged in guy that I was at the time is I wanted to make sure she would, you know, she was being sexually exclusive with me if I was gonna start dealing with this chick again. So of course I said to her, you're not seeing anybody else right now. And she, you know, to which she answers no. Now, when I got into the phone, so words matter with women. So this is the point that I'm making. The way that you use words and the way that she interprets the definition of the words matter. So I caught this thread. And by the way, if you wanna catch a woman cheating, Look for the conversations between her and her girlfriend, her closest girlfriend, because that's where she's gonna be honest about her extracurricular activities, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so found this conversation between her and her girlfriend, and she's like, you know, Rich was asking me about if I'm seeing anybody, and of course, you know, and then her friend says, well, what did you tell him? And I'm like, okay, something's going on. And then the answer is something like, well, of course I told him no, because I'm not seeing anybody, but I was fucking so-and-so. I'm like, all right. That's, there it is, there it is right there. So right to my face, because I say, because I use the language, are you seeing anybody else? She, you know, her little, you know, female brain, you know, basically comes back with, well, no, I'm not dating anybody else, but I'm banging this guy. So technically I'm not seeing anybody, so I can tell Rich that I'm not seeing anybody and I'm in the clear. And then I don't have to worry about him, you know, whatever slut shaming me or thinking that I'm a, a 304 or a garden tool, blah, blah, blah. So that's how, that's how women's mind think, right? They're, 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 they like, you know, when I tell you guys that men love to complicate their life and justify why they do it, it's not just men. It's, it's, it, it's certainly women too, right? They just do it in different ways. So 
How do you establish a woman's telling you the truth versus lies? Again, just understand that when women lie to you, when they deceive you, it's generally to preserve purity and their beauty, or what, or what would be considered purity and beauty at the end of the day. So just remember that. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons why if you ever ask a woman what her notch count is, she's not gonna be honest with you. Um, and I'll tell you why, because when women are calculating how many guys they've been with in their head, what they're usually thinking about is boyfriends or guys that they dated generally over a period of 60 to 90 days, and then that's where they usually compute a notch count in their head. They don't count threesomes, one night stands, what happened at the foam cannon party in Ibiza, blowjobs, uh, lesbian encounters, threesomes, foursomes, orgies, what, they don't count any of those things. So. In their mind, they're like, well, it's technically not a lie because I don't really consider that like an interaction. I don't consider that a notch count because I wasn't with the guy for any period of time. It doesn't matter. You guys know what it, you know, you know what this boils down to is it's a bold faced lie. It's just they rationalize things different in, the, in their head. So how do you establish the truth from lies? Watch the behavior and listen to your intuition. Those two things, if you tune into them and you hone them properly, will serve you better than anything else. And I'm not opposed to the phone check, you know. You mentioned the phone check in there, and I've had conversations with guys about this before. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you saying, you know, if she's if she's doing something on her phone or you're suspicious of something like that, it's gotta be surprised. You can't be like, you know, texting her and say, when you come over, pass me your phone. It's gotta be fully surprised so she doesn't have, have an opportunity to delete anything. A phone check does work. And uh, just say, you know, she's doing something, pass me your phone and unlock it. If she, if she hands you the phone unlocked with no surprise look on her face, totally calm, I wouldn't even bother looking at it, to be honest with you, because there's nothing to look at there. But if she fights, if she resists, uh, you know, she's like, well, give me your phone, or what are you looking for? Or, Not right now, maybe later, or something like that. You know something's up. You're, gonna, you're definitely gonna find something that is gonna be problematic for you. So again, um, you know, you wanna watch their behavior. This is why I'm, you know, I'm always about guys taking their time with women. Turn off the afterburners, slow the fuck down, stop trying to get like married to a chick in like four months or make your girlfriend after three dates or something like that. Slow it down, right? Watch your behavior, you know, see what she's all about. Her lifestyle will give away her past as well too. I mean, you know, if you're vetting for um, like mother stock, for example, you wanna have kids with her and you wanna make sure she doesn't have a promiscuous past. All right, well, you know, she's 33, let's say, how many boys, you know, how many boyfriends have you had? You're not gonna ask her what her notch count is. You can ask her something like, you know, how, how many guys have you been in a serious long-term relationship with? Well, I dated one guy for like 12 years from the age of like 20 to 31. And um, you know, that like that was it. Like that was the only guy that I was with. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, did you ever travel? Did you ever go to like, you know, Europe for the summer? No, 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 I never did anything like that. Well, that's probably a chick that's got a low notch count, right? Because Because the behavior gives away you know, the reality of her world. But if it's like, she's never had any long-term relationships, she's traveled to Europe like 16 times, you look at her Instagram, and there's pictures of her on like expensive yachts and all this sort of stuff, um, you can, I mean, come on, like you know who's paying for all that, right? Some dude, right? And she's exchanging her beauty and his sexuality for his financial resources, right? Men hunt, <laughs> women gather from men. You get the point here, sort of thing. So, yeah, that, that's, that's really what it boils down to. Men and women lie for different reasons. They're all gonna lie to you at some point. Um, you Basically, I mean, if you wanna deal with women, what this guy was essentially getting at was he wanted to get into a long-term relationship. If you're gonna deal with women on a long-term basis, you wanna make sure that you do vet her. And if she is a pathological liar, you don't invite her into your life. Keep her as a friends with benefits, you know, if you want, but don't make her a wife, don't make her a girlfriend, don't make her the mother of your kids, none of those things. You gotta be super careful with it. So. Anyway, I hope that offers some useful uh, advice or tips for you. Leave some comments below on your own experiences and um, smash the like button. Check out the top pinned comment. It's got links to my book and a bunch of other stuff. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.